How's it going guys? Happy Tuesday. Cheers to you. I'm drinking my black coffee as you can see. I put some cinnamon in it this morning. I gotta say I dig it. But I have to tell you guys, honestly, the whole black coffee thing, um, Scott Thompson, here you go. You said that I would get used to it. Valerie Waters, you said that I would get used to it, that I would, um, now Valerie said, she goes, you'll get to the point where you will actually, you know, that's how you'll, you'll order it and you'll prefer it. You don't want to have all this stuff in it. I don't know that I'm there yet. <laughs> like I told you that I'm not going to go, well, this is cool. I'm used to it. And you know, but still in my head, would I rather have a real cappuccino with a lot of sugar in it or a lot of Splenda? I have to be honest, I would. So it's just kind of one of those things. It's like I told you guys when I <clears throat> quit having soda all day, you know, um, I freaking love Diet Coke. I love Coke Zero. Um, I love Diet Coke. I would drink it all day, every day, 17 times a day, if I could. Um, technically, I could, obviously, but um, I'm not going to be one of those people that says, you know, I've just lost the taste for it. Are you kidding me? I would drink that all day. I put an IV in my arm. I'm just not doing it, and I'm limiting myself to, you know, having it more on occasion. Not because of what other people say, but because deep down inside, I know it's probably better for me, whatever. Um, anyway, do you like my shirt? This is, I don't know if you can see it. it says I am beast mode. This is from um, View Sport. So View Sport is the, uh, good Lord, talk about rat's nest up there. Um, um, View Sport is the company that has, we have partnered with my company, Fitfluential. We have partnered with them to make um, t-shirts. Um, so we have our first line of t-shirts out. Um, we've got tank tops and full t-shirts for guys. Here's the thing. It's not just that they have cool and fun sayings for working out. This is the coolest thing ever. They have this um, sweat technology, sweat activation technology. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. But long story short, they have this fabric. And when you start sweating, secret phrases come out on the back. And they've researched like where women sweat. You know, women tend to sweat in their lower back. Men tend to sweat up here first. So that's where the phrases will come out. So cool. So we have, you know, we chose to do, everybody really caught on to us doing Fit Financial Proof. You know, you do your workout, you take a picture of yourself kind of doing something that shows, hey, I worked out today, this is my proof, whatever. Um, and so that we've got these shirts that say, you know, Fit Lunch on the front with our new logo, and on the back, when you sweat, the proof comes out. Cheesy but cute, kind of like me. Anyway, yeah, I dig it. I dig this with the cinnamon. Um, but I will tell you, it's, again, the whole transitioning uh, into paleo, uh, so much, I, I think I was just at a better place to transition to paleo than in the past. Um, it didn't seem like it was this huge undertaking for me, but it is interesting for me to walk around my kitchen and see how different my fridge and my freezer look, how different, how, you know, I have this pantry, see that behind me? Yeah, that little thing like this. When they make condos, your pantry is this big. <laughs> but it's okay, because actually in that pantry, you know, I'm not buying canned food anymore. Um, and this is stuff I used to do in the past, you guys. I used to go to Sam's Club or Costco, and I would just buy green beans or canned, refried black beans, fat-free, of course, um, and just, my pantry used to be just stocked full of canned food or, you know, any kind of broths, um, flour, you know, flour, sugar, all that stuff. And of course, some guy's gonna come out and mow the lawn. It's gonna be really loud right from it. Actually, I think it's far away. No, he's coming. Um, but anyway, my pantry is just like back there. I'm actually using that to store my my towels and just other stuff. Um, so it was funny because as I had put everything away in my kitchen, I realized there were like two or three cabinets that were empty. And I'm thinking, what is it that I'm not storing? You know, but I will tell you what's full is I use my microwave to store because I don't like stuff all over my counter. So I have a big bowl of fresh fruit and that's where I store that with my avocados. And, and then I have in my stove down below it, I've got my sweet potatoes in there. And then I store my um, red onions and um, 
I've got like a case that I get tomatoes in. I just don't like, you know, 17 different bowls on my counter and stuff. Mr. Flo, there you go. Mr. Flo. Somebody wrote to me last yesterday on Twitter and said, why do you call your arms Mr. Flo? And I realized some of you that don't understand, you know, that I'm actually speaking to somebody, that one of my watchers or fans or subscribers, whatever you want to call them, his name is Mr. Flo, and if I don't flex, he sends me notifications like, hey Kelly. So that's the name of somebody. I don't actually have names for my body parts. I'm not a man. Hurry it up. A couple of other things. <laughs> now that my new place is on the ground floor, I've had to get used to um, certain things. Number one, I had to really amp up the ADT security system that I'm putting in. They're doing that. When are they doing that? Friday, I think. Um, just because all of a sudden, I used to laugh when my mom was like, <gasps> seriously? I used to laugh when my mom was all worried that, oh, you're gonna be on the ground floor. And I don't think of things the way my mom thinks of things. Anyway, the other thing that I had to realize was um, I'm on the ground floor and I'm used to being up in my last condo. have my blinds closed and stuff like that. But, you know, you can walk around your house naked and not worry about it. So now I made my shirt all um, crooked. But here, so I have blinds everywhere. And again, in the morning I have them open. But then when it starts to get hot, you know, I'm going to pull my shades because it keeps it darker here. It keeps it cooler. <laughs> above my front door. Mom's making me curtains for these right now. There's two windows that are above my front door. And I didn't realize <laughs> Did I tell this story already? I didn't realize that like, I'm on the ground floor and there's a condo over there where someone's on the top floor. So it's like literally from there, wh whatever room that is, their kitchen or that bedroom, it's looking right down into my window. So here's me walking around, throwing my, my workout clothes in the washer, thinking, oh, all of my blinds are closed, it's no big deal. And I walk out here and I'm, I look up at that window and I'm like, Okay, note to self, get some curtains for there. Hopefully I didn't scare anybody. I might have traumatized them forever. But anyway, ooh, that's pretty good. I'm actually digging cinnamon. But anyway, you guys, um, I have to go because I have a meeting in an hour and I would like to, actually, hour and 40. And I'd like to get my run in before that. Um, you might have noticed, I think I put it, on my last blog post, but I actually went for a run Sunday and I ran for 65 minutes. Now, here's how I ran 65 minutes. So it's a little different than those of you that have been running for a while. What I did is my usual route, um, you know, I haven't been using my Polar because it's broken um, and I haven't switched to anything yet. And so I just have estimated by driving a route to figure out what three miles is. Um, so I've been usually going this, this one route, and I know it's three miles, so it takes me 40 minutes to do, or that's kind of the pace that I've been going at. Again, that's nothing compared to you. I mean, some of you would probably do three miles in 30 minutes or, or less. I'm not at a 10-minute mile. <laughs> I could do a 10-minute mile, um, but my problem is um, when I run faster, I get cramps, so I'm wor working on just you know, getting in my groove. I've only been running for a couple months now. So um, I've been doing three miles in about 40 minutes. What I did on Sunday is I ran out. So usually what I do is, you know, I go halfway there. That's a mile and a half. And then I turn around and I come back. Um, I went 
to where, so this time what I did, wait, how did I do this? Instead of going to the halfway point, I just kept going and I started to continue taking that, um, that route further. So then I had gone 40 minutes. God, how did I do that? I had gone 40 minutes. Instead of stopping, I went 20 minutes and then I went on a different route. I'm making absolutely no sense. I'm sure I'm not surprising you. But anyway, all that to say, by the time I got back to my house, I had been running for 65 minutes. Um, I did stop several times and I walked for about, what I'd say, two to three blocks. Um, I think because I was starting to go fast um, and it was starting to get really hot out. So I stopped. But I stop and I walk, I speed walk, I walk really fast and um, then I just keep running. Um, and what's going on in my head is that every time I want to stop and give up, I'm like, I just kind of keep telling myself, number one, to make sure that I flip to a really good song on my iPod. But I just keep telling myself, like, you know you can do this. Like, imagine if you were running a half marathon and you were, like, that close to the finish line. Would you stop? No, you would go. So, you know, we all have to do whatever we're going to do to push through. But for me, it's music. It's also kind of just imagining that a thousand people are watching me and I don't want to quit. Um, Especially sometimes I just think about the people I saw at the CrossFit Games. Because you watch them, and they're like exhausted. And they have a whole stadium of people watching them. And they just push through and they push through. And it's amazing how good it feels when you really push yourself through something. And I mean, here, I started running again. And now I just ran 65 minutes. That's kind of a big deal to me. And it feels great. Um, I'm already at 11 minutes. Um, I will say I expect my friend Aunt Flo to show up any minute, and I have been hungry like the wolf the past couple of days. Seriously, you guys, like the other day, the past couple of days, I swear I feel like I could eat my table that's so hungry. It's creepy. Um, lastly, the other thing is, as I've been eating paleo and, and getting, I don't want to say strict, that's not the word, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the things I'm eating, because I've told you guys this before, there's that freaking ratty ass hair. Um, I've been wondering, like, what what is it specifically that, since I've been back, has made such a marked difference? What is it that, that is that I'm not doing or, or, or that I'm not eating that has made such a difference? Or is it kind of, it's just happened, it's just happenstance that the cumulative effect of a lot of the habits have come together and then, you know, I'm cutting this out or the other. Because I'm thinking, like, what was I eating before that I'm not eating anymore that is in just three weeks has made such a marked difference? Um, I mean, like, you guys, I just can't describe how much progress I've made. I told you I took my measurements and I've lost another inch everywhere um, in three weeks. Now, maybe I lost a fourth of an inch while I was gone, while I was moving. I mean, I don't know. Who cares? But um, I started to really pay attention to things like, you know, because Here's one of the big things that I know. I've cut soy. I'm not having the tempa on my salads. I'm not having, I'm not going to Starbucks and getting a soy chai latte anymore. Um, is it the soy? I don't know. Valerie Waters tends to think that, you know, it's just that I've calmed my adrenals. I'm not overtraining anymore. I'm settled. My body's settling in. Whatever. But because of that, I'm starting to really, I'm encouraged to look more closely at what I'm eating. So when I was in Walmart, I had to stock up and get, you know, like shower curtains and stuff for my house. And I was going to get the spray for my pan. So when I make my eggs in the morning, I've been using this Pam spray or whatever. Why am I not using butter or oil? Um, I don't use butter because the dairy bothers my stomach. Um, it's not that I'm trying to avoid the fat. That's not the point. But, um, and, and I don't know why, you know, I could use coconut oil, but... I don't want my eggs to be sweet. So um, I went to, I was looking in the aisle where they had all the spray, and I looked at every single spray, even the Smart Balance. They're all soy. They're all canola, I can't talk, canola oil. Um, so I ended up getting this. I thought I'd share this with you. I don't even recognize this brand, Winona Pure. But um, it's just olive oil. This was the only thing that was reasonably not disgusting. So this is what I'm using. To cook right now. If I use other stuff and I'm cooking anything on the pan, I'll use coconut oil um, or whatever. But it was that, and then also um, I went to get mayo 
because I thought for the times that I'm getting these grass-fed organic um, burgers, I'll have a burger on a plate with, um, I like to just put tom fresh tomato, some red onion, some lettuce, and then I just put ketchup, mustard, and a little mayo. I like mayo. And I'm like, well, you know, I could make my own homemade mayo. I saw that in the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? This, this new paleo cookbook. I remember there was a recipe for homemade mayo. Then I'm like, well, there has to be some like all natural mayo that's good. I'll get, you know, the full fat mayo. Again, I looked at every single brand, even some healthy brands. They're all canola oil, which is like, I don't even, there's no such thing as canola, if I'm correct. I feel like an ass if I put this vlog out and people are like, actually, Kelly, there is a canola plant. I've said dumber things, right? Um, but anyway, every single mayo had, you know, either some form of soy in it or canola uh, or whatever. And I'm looking at this going, there's not one of these that is just all natural. That is mayonnaise, and yes, I say mayonnaise funny. Um, I don't say mayonnaise like my friend, Wendy always makes fun of me. Um, mayonnaise is supposed to be eggs. Uh, I think this is the recipe that I saw to make it is uh, eggs, lemon. If you make homemade mayo, you put uh, eggs, olive oil, um, lemon, salt and pepper. That might be it. There's not a lot of ingredients in, in uh, mayo, but I am going to make my own homemade because I was looking at the ingredients. I'm like, seriously? The biggest things that you see hiding, the, the biggest things that I'm observing that are hiding in things that you wouldn't expect soy and then this canola oil and or of course high fructose corn syrup but um soy is in things like worcestershire sauce um it's in chocolate if you see soy lecithin it's in there um it's just in a lot it's in ketchup it's in there's high fructose corn syrup in ketchup so i got some better um, organic ketchup it's just kind of creepy and these are things i noticed before but i'm paying more attention to them now because it matters more to me now that this diet that I've transitioned to, it's just, I feel so much better that even though I knew all of this information before, you guys know, I've cut this in for, I've cut, I've cut Splenda or whatever in the past. I wasn't doing it for the right reasons and it certainly wasn't sitting well with me. I didn't feel like I had results and I, I was so looking to, to try things really fast and see results really fast that I, you know, there was no personal attachment to any of my decisions. Now my decisions are based on like, wow, I'm feeling really good and maybe it's because I've cut out all the soy, so why not really look at cutting out all of the soy? I don't know, I could be wrong. It could just be the cumulative effect of everything. But all that said, I feel great. Um, the fact that I can, that I went in over the weekend pulled out my, all of my jeans that have been in a bin for two years. I haven't worn jeans publicly in like two years because I have not felt comfortable in my jeans. I have all my size eight Levi's in there and I tried them on. They all fit now. They all fit. They're just still a little bit tight um, where I'd be like, I, I just, when I wear jeans, I want to feel totally comfortable whether I'm sitting or standing. I don't like the idea of like if you sit and there's even just the littlest bit of muffin top, but I'm like that close. I haven't been that close to being happy in my jeans again for two years. Do you know how great that feels? So all that says, cheers you guys, cheers to Scott, cheers to Valerie of course who's been guiding me all along the way. She's the one that first told me when I started, she's like, she told me that she was paleo, except, you know, but she'll have red wine occasionally, whatever. She goes, and, I'm, and I remember thinking when she told me that I, I could never do paleo. Never. Here I am. So there we go, 19 minutes of babbling on. I will be back day after tomorrow. Um, that's kind of my flow right now, is vlogging every other day. And I will see you then. Um, have a great rest of the day.